it would have been seven but quite frankly once they put them in there the total number in a garage will probably be six because you've got additional parking gaps between those it's probably going to take six or eight parking spaces depending on the location in the garage so the the amendments in here and the conditions in my revised memo yep simply indicate that they'll be adding those to be consistent with ADA requirements yeah will ultimately get a plan and that will result in some sort of adjustment to the proof of parking which I don't know until I see the redesign so I think that's adequately taken care of in the conditions okay very good thank you well, just for the record, Dave and uh, Chris, did you get a copy of Dean Johnson's report dated uh, May 25th? Yes, we did. And you understand the conditions and the findings? Yes, we do. And um, we've already started making those changes that Dean recommended. Uh, they're supposed to be complete this Friday, the updated parking with the new proof of parking. Thank you. Can you hear him, uh, Chris? Thank you. Uh, well, we're going. Anything else, Bob? No, nope, that was the only thing that jumped out at me. Barb, do you have any? Yeah, I, I had questions about the parking, but uh, Dean has answered most of them and has changed the um, wording in the uh, his uh, recommendations, which indicate that all of the spaces will be assigned. So that works pretty well. I did um, have a question about, uh, I'm glad the gentleman from Halverson is here. And um, I was just wondering if you have or are willing to, uh, as a show of good faith, give us a copy of what type of addendum you have to your leases that regulates uh, rules and regulations for both the management of the property and the residents so that everybody's basically on the same page yeah, I certainly can um, we have a standard lease and then we have like a community community policy um, which kind of outlines you know the, uh, the rules for the uh, community and then parking as well and then we have like a uh, parking like addendum as well for assigned parkings okay and then what about for the apartments uh, and the residents do you give them a written or emailed list of what's expected for them at the property so everyone's informed on whether or not you know they're being considerate to their neighbors and and uh, following all of your recommendations yep there's like a 50 line community policy that outlines all that all the rules for everything from barbecues to parking um, cleaning up the hallways stuff like that okay, um, good. so I can I can certainly share that with you guys okay great thank you Yep. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions or comments? Um, the one thing I, I and Dean, this is <clears throat> more probably to you is part of the whole with the amount of parking they have is making sure that the garages are assigned. How much of it, do they all have to be assigned? Is that what's needed in order to meet the parking requirement or what? Because I see they do have that you're charging $70 for, an, for the garage stack. And I know the last meeting you kind of discussed that maybe as an incentive to get renters in, you might offer free parking in there or something like that. But I'm just kind of curious how how much of that garage has to be assigned in? 100%. Okay. <laughs> so whether it's whether, whether they're deriving income or whether they give them away, um, condition 11 in, in the original, um, well, in my revised yeah. memo, this is not a new provision. It was there um, in the last recommendation. Um, it, it just says uh, they either have to be leased or they have to be assigned all the time. Now, once that's done, y you assume that that takes pressure off of surface parking. But on certain days, people that got a garage stall may not do that, and you may have a conflict. And 
you know that can happen any time anywhere no matter what your conditions are um, Barb mentioned earlier she had some questions I emailed her some comments um, if if you had a remarkable concern and did not want to test the notion of well let's just see if there's a parking problem or not uh, then I wouldn't recommend to the council that there be a proof of parking just build it all right now but then if there's a problem you, you don't have anything to go back on so our our provision in all conditional use permits is that the city council at any time upon reasonable notice and you know that might be a construction season whatever uh, if there's a parking problem out there and people are trying to park on Hornsby where we don't allow parking uh, they're going to invoke that provision and ask for 37 or 40 or 42 uh, proof of parking spaces, whatever the number ends up being, and, and they'll put them in. in. In the meantime, this option with proof of parking simply allows everybody, uh, the, the building owners, the managers, and the tenants to go through this and, and make certain that it, it's going to work. And whether they say it's not working, we need more parking, or whether the city does, we can invoke that provision. There's one other comment that was um, also included in here, and that is that at, at no time can any of these parking spaces be obstructed. I, I, I'm concerned because it's a tight site, and it would be very easy for a snowplower to just start piling up 20, 30 parking spaces. And this says you can't do that. That's going to be an enforcement issue. Uh, they do have some additional property if they never have to build garages or parking where they can haul that snow. If not, they'll have to haul off site and quite frankly, might be, it might be odd in this community, but that's done all over the place. Is Hornsby posted no parking? Not, not currently. I... Not currently, but um, it's not designed for parking. But it's not posted at this time. It's not, it is not posted. So because it's not designed and it's not posted, could somebody park there? I mean, unless we post it, people could park on Hornsby, correct? OK. That, that's not for you guys. That's more for us. <laughs> OK, that was just. Um, I would like to say we went, what was it, two years ago um, when the first department developer came in before us we went through a lot of back and forth back and forth and and I'd like to say and thanks to the city too but seeing the design come in meeting the criteria of the city um, ordinances and in our design uh, standards it, it, it's a very nice looking building I think it'll look really nice in there um, it's nice that we didn't have to go back and forth with you to say, nope, you got to do this. Nope, you got to do this. Can you add more of this that the design you brought in and, and looks really nice. So I, I appreciate that. And, and I know the city does too. And I think it'll look really nice up there. So welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Is that it? Yes. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I concur with Chris on the idea. It is a nice looking building. And like you said, two or three years ago, I think we it caught us off guard, this big building apartment complex. And we had no, nothing to go on. But thanks to Dean and Elizabeth, we got going here. Is there any other discussion about this building? Or this? Mr. Chairman, could I just offer um, maybe a summary or try and put everything into context? This is a planned unit development conditional use permit. Um, they have asked for some concessions, including building setback on uh, essentially the east or rear side of the building, um, a 10-foot setback, which is the same as our side yard requirements. Um, they've also asked for some concessions in the size of the parking spaces, which, as we discussed at the last meeting, um, in some instances with a retail project or or a situation where you have the public using a facility, you may not want to change these spaces. Um, I, I have a real pet peeve about dings in my car when you're in an eight and a half 
or nine foot wide parking space i'd rather have ten in this case there's no public parking other than the guests that come in so the extraordinary comments that you made additional design features consistency with the ordinance which was in flux during the time that they were considering this proposal i mentioned in my memo that they have an extraordinary landscape plan these building amenities we don't require in the ordinance so whether they're outdoor patios and playgrounds or rooftop facilities or indoor amenities to the building in combination i feel part of your recommendation to the council to approve a plan unit development is this exchange and i think i think we got that a couple of years ago when we went through this we argued about parking there was no exchange we argued about design there was no exchange it was amenity less in my mind at that time and so i just wanted to keep that in perspective that's the basis to say you know what we're happy to make some concessions particularly when they don't impact the public other than the visible components of this building are forever going to be publicly visible so i just wanted to set the stage when you make a recommendation and make you feel good uh did i Ms. Q here, so did you set 10 foot setback on the back? No, no, no 20 feet instead of 30. Yeah. Oh, oh, you, but you mentioned 10. So yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's yeah. incorrect. It, well, I, I, it caught me and I thought it was 20 feet back to the DNR. <coughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <coughs> Thank you, Dean. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I have two questions for the applicant. Yes. Um, looking at the list of amenities that you gave the presentation last meeting, I just wanted to make sure that those amenities weren't proposed, but those were actually amenities that you were going to put into the building. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know part of the plan and, and part of the reason that we uh, incorporate the operations uh, represented here tonight with, with Noah is that uh, he's the guy that has to fill it up and he has to bring the uh, the people into the building so we we ask him to give us the criteria what what do you need to be able to be competitive uh, in this marketplace uh, what kind of amenities uh, you know what's the operational cost for those amenities and and uh, so rather than just blindly you know take industry standard numbers or averages you know we've asked um, Noah and his and his team to specifically look at this specific market with these specific uh, amenities involved so that we're going into this thing with our, our eyes wide open not just uh, you know not just from a book or from someone else's experience but uh, you know what are our best guesses for which amenities can we support um, you know the, the pool is a nice thing but the pool is where the problems are always at so so we don't have a pool so we give up something to maybe another development that does have a, a pool but okay. uh, all of those things are part of the overall i don't think that uh, um you know we're not we're not going to take away uh, a major component like we've got designed in at this stage we've we've gone beyond that uh, as as dean kind of alluded to it, it's an overall um give and take uh, be, generate the right solution for the right project have all the right numbers with all the right uh, information going into it uh, we found that's a better recipe for success than uh, than keeping our eyes shut and and hoping <laughs> so yeah every intent is to is to have those amenities and make them be as nice as possible to be competitive okay thank you my second question is um looking at the timing uh we've been asked uh, as staff members with phone calls um what is the timing of this building and i really didn't know whether this was a, a this year build a next year build what do you have a projected open date a little tough to tell with financing uh, with rising interest rates uh, lenders are all of a sudden getting kind of squirrely so um I, I think it always happens when there's a jump like that everybody shutters for a week and a half and then they get back to business so um we believe it's it's going to be a very appealing project uh, to all lenders uh, more so than other things they have to work on so 
Um, we're anxious to start as soon as we possibly can. Uh, I think that looks like it's this fall is the earliest we could get underway. So, um, you know, what, what do we figure? A uh, well, year and a half? Maybe we can phase some openings, but, uh, you know, 2023 to 2024 at the outside would be our goal. Thank you. Chairman? Yes, it's Dean Johnson again. I, I just want to add to what city administrator just asked, commitments for the things that you like. Um, we, we do make a condition of the approval, uh, the conditional use permit, all of the documents that we reviewed in this process, including the narratives, they're all spelled out in this. So in the course of accomplishing financing and getting ready to go, uh, the economy soured and there are some decisions to make changes to those. It's going to be up to us to catch them, but you have every right to say that's not what we approved. So I just want to make clear um, part of that permit is a guarantee that they're on the hook to fulfill these from the design of the building itself, the amount of parking to the amenities that are in the building. So my question then is, does the building department look at that or does the city look at it before it's started? We do, a, we do a zoning review when the building um, permit comes in and we make every effort to make sure everything is in line with what was proposed, including the colors and such. Um, as far as building amenities, um, we'd, this is going to be a little bit different because we really don't have um, a whole lot of development with this type of development, so we'll have to figure out how we're going to review that and we may just review with the applicant for the, their, um, their plan when they come in with the building permit. This is Bob. If if we entertain a concession for the setback from 20 feet to from 30 feet to 20 feet, does the drainage plan also need to be amended to accommodate that? This is Dean. Um, all of the civil work is based upon that particular setback that was requested. At 30 or 20? At 20. So all, all the original plans, current plans, are based on that setback. My only original concern was that the fire department, which sometimes does not like minimal setbacks, uh, has to sign off on this, and I understand they did. Uh, but that's still a condition of this. Um, somebody else asked me whether or not the DNR has any influence on this, and I, I, I don't want to act as your attorney, but I'd say no. Um, and so um, I don't see this as an issue. That's, that particular property is not part of Shoreland or anything else, so they have no jurisdiction. Um, so if, storage pond, retention, all of that is calculated based on 20 feet? Yep. And if I could add on that, the, <clears throat> the evaluation of how to fit enough units on this site was challenging with, uh, with the coffee taking a corner, the coffee uh, lot taking. Now, that's, I see that as an amenity. I think uh, a lot of residents are going to really enjoy having a hot cup of coffee available, and, and the aroma should be a nice attraction <laughs> from the balconies. Um, but it did make configuring this site and getting parking to work uh, quite challenging. We, we looked at options of pushing across uh, setbacks in other areas. It seemed to encroach more on the road, which is where more people were going to uh, see the landscaping. Um, it, we'd, we would have eliminated more of that buffering between the, the road. So we felt that it was the, the most reasonable uh, direction to push and, and then still get the amount of parking that, uh, that we could cram onto that funny shape. It's an unusual shape building because of that. Um, we, we tried lots of different shapes. <laughs> You should see all the uh, weird-looking <laughs> buildings, but uh, this uh, modified H uh, configuration was the one that uh, delivered the most organized uh, parking we could come up with. So, oh, this is Chris. Um, it's nicer than a big box. <laughs> so many we see going up are just squares, rectangles. So, can I ask you a question, Dave? <clears throat> uh, 
Is this the only apartment building you got going currently? Uh, yes. A couple others uh, that we're considering, but uh, this would be uh, the uh, the next one. Well, we're not like fifth on the list or nothing nope. like Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Barb? Bob? No. None here. No. Anybody like to make a motion? I can make it if you want. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve make a send in a, a recommendation to the city council that we approve uh, this uh, with the understanding of the findings of facts 1 through 26 and the recommendations 1 through 22 uh, written out by uh, Dean Johnson of Resource Strategies Corporations Corporation. Is there anything I'm missing here? Dated May 25th. I'm sorry, what? Dated May 25th, revised yeah, yeah. debate. Thank you. Yeah. The revised uh, letter on May 25th, 2022. Anything I'm missing? I don't think so. City Administrator, Elizabeth? Um, it's the it's the engineering um, it's the engineering conditions and that would have been in your previous packet. Oh that's I, some I don't have the I don't have the um, conditions. From the engineer's letter. Dated May 12, 2022. May 12. Memorandum. You have that, Chris? Page. Ron. Oh. <coughs> I think that uh, was. So be going I have on. to say this again. Start over. Nope, just the, including including the. Report. Okay, just so I include the memorandum, memorandum dated May 12, 2022, uh, by the city engineer Kevin Bittner, uh, noting, well, dated May 12th, the seven items. There we go. Anybody want to make a. Uh, this is Barb, second there. We have a second on the motion. Any discussion or any questions? Any add-ons? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Chris, aye. Ron, aye. Barb, aye. Bob, aye. So the motion's approved unanimously, and uh, we'll send it on to the city council, and they'll listen to it, I believe, next Wednesday? Next Wednesday. The uh, June 8th. So thanks for coming. Thanks for coming Listen. in, guys. Thank you. Dave? Appreciate it. Thank you. And it's a nice looking building. I hope it's uh, put up there in a year or two or whatever. Me too. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go on to item number seven on the agenda. It's a public hearing and discussion. Concilla Acres Second Edition Preliminary and Final Plat, pages 21 to 43 and enclosures. And uh, Mike Nelson, uh, if you're here, can you have a seat up front? This is kind of like deja vu here. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a public hearing. So then, uh, uh, Carissa, you would you read the notice as published? Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the City of Columbus Planning Commission on Wednesday, June 1st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as parties may be heard and will be conducted in an interactive technology format at the Columbus City Hall located at 16319 Kettle River Boulevard, Minnesota to consider a request for a preliminary plat, Concilla Acres first edition application for the creation of one new lot in the commercial industrial district. Members of the public interested in attending in person or monitoring the meeting should contact city offices at 651-464-3120 or visit the city website for more information at columbusmn.us. The hearing shall continue until all evidence and testimony has been received. The applicant is City View Electric, Mike Nelson. Uh, property own, owner is Concilla Properties LLP. Vacant property adjacent to 14309 Lake Drive Northeast. 
pin number 28322440006 and 28322440002 Signed Elizabeth Mersko, zoning administrator. It was submitted to the Forest Lake Times on May 16th, 2022, published and posted uh, on May 19th, 2022. Thank you, Carissa. Good evening, Mike. I don't think we have to have Mike say his name and his address anymore. I think we, we remember you from April 2021. Uh, but as usual, it is a public hearing, so as normal protocol, and for the record, could you brief us a little about uh, the project or the revised project you want to do tonight? So the revised project is very similar to the original. Um, we had a, original intent was to, we had created, we were trying to create a, a separate, um, we bought two adjoining properties that were landlocked, and we were going to build a principal building back there and create a uh, legal easement through our existing property to get to the new property. Long story short, things changed. And we're just going to abandon that legal easement. We're going to combine all properties onto one. Um, so I think we bought the first property, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. We've bought several more properties since that all adjoin this. And we've amend we've consolidated them already and now we're adding these other two lots to it. We do propose to build the same building um, size and and uh, construction type as we had previously um, brought forward, uh, but the use of it is going to be different than it was a year ago. So basically we're combining all of our properties to consolidate a property second edition. Okay. I think I understand. <laughs> In other words, it's the same thing. It's just we're not going to have the easement and all that going on. So um, just for the record, also for tonight's record, did you receive a copy of the report developed by Dean Johnson of the Resource Strategies Corporation dated May 24th, 2022, noting your project with this preliminary plat findings of fact and preliminary plat recommendations, along with the final plat recommendations and the conditional use permit status? I did. And do you have any questions or comments about them that you'd like to make tonight? I do not. Um, I've spoken to Dean also, and, and it's real clear. Just have to tidy up a few things, uh, nothing major. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, we're gonna open up the floor to the commission members if they have any comments or questions. Well, let's start with Dean. Do you wanna say anything? No, sir. You, you set me up. I was going to say that's a first, but <laughs> uh, Chris, anything? No, I, I don't. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> uh, Bob, you have any questions or statements? Or? I don't. Mike, thanks for coming in again. All right, you're welcome. And Barb? No, I have no questions. And I don't really have any either. I think we worked you over there in April of 2021 or whenever it was whatever that date was. But uh, as we, we noted, we're having a public uh, hearing, so I'm gonna open it up to the public right now. Anyone who's interested in this matter and wants to present testimony as evidence on the issues, please acknowledge themselves by stating their name and address, after which you have the floor to speak. Hearing no one coming forth, we'll close the public hearing and we'll go to a discussion. Chris, anything? <laughs> no, no, not much to say. No, Bart? no nothing. It's Bob? good to see your business expand. <laughs> None here. I just have one question. I, I, before you were going to, there was another company, it was you are going to start up to a security like. Right, security bar. blinds and that. That you're not going that route. Not going that route. Um, supply chain issue has caused us to warehouse more than we anticipated we have to order product out well in advance we don't actually know when it's going to show up so we might order stuff six months ahead of time and sit on it for three or four months and we just need more space for that also the other business was you know, you start doing the math and it didn't seem to 
the ROI was not quite what we were hoping for there. Um, I do have a question though. I'm, 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 this is a little unique because this is a um, preliminary plat. And I've, I've kind of already went through the whole, pro there was some discussion about my need to resubmit a CUP and where that process starts over and where it continues from where I was last year. So I've, if I could get some clarity on that would be great. You want me to answer? Mm -hmm. uh, this is Dean Johnson. Um, the, <clears throat> the information that was included in my memo to the Planning Commission is um, ad advisory. And so there won't be any action regarding the conditional use permit, but to answer your question, um, what you have submitted so far um, is a slight revision of the building that was approved last year. I believe the last one had a mezzanine and that no longer exists. It's right. basically the same um, footprint of a building. It's essentially in the same place. Um, I did get a copy but haven't looked at it yet of um, some civil plan revisions and I'm assuming those are minor or updates. Um, I think Elizabeth and I would make a determination if this is not a departure from what was approved a year ago, there would not be a public hearing. It would be simply taking action within that probation period, which is gonna end in June, and so we need to extend that another six months or whatever might be reasonable and process this and change the conditions because the, the fundamental change is we had la two landlocked parcels that were being combined and platted as one landlocked parcel a year ago. And our anxiety was it had no public frontage. Uh, they wanted it that way because they might have sold it to a third party and we said, then you gotta have public easements that guarantee access forever. That will all come out of the conditional use permit because it's all under one ownership. So there are a variety of things happening. Had Mike indicated that, uh, gee, um, business is great and we need to double the size of that, I think our reaction would be that, that that's a stretch. You're 100% bigger than what we approved a year ago. We need another public hearing. Mm. What we're seeing now is just a continuation of this probation period where they never filed the plat, they never got a building permit, they never started the project. We've run out of that probation period. Reasonably, we extend those to get the job done. And Mike has been submitting things over the past week and a half. Um, and I suspect um, at, at one of your meetings, we would make a point of fact that here's a, here's a new summary of conditions. Um, that changed from the action before, ultimately the city council um, would be the likely entity to make the decision, but I, I think we would bring that to you as well. It just may not be a, a formal recommendation if this is done typically administratively through probationary um, approval process. So what I'm seeing now again, the, the building is essentially, you wouldn't know it was different, it just doesn't have a mezzanine doesn't have office, it's not gonna be processing within that building. It is strictly a warehouse for the use by uh, City View Electric itself. Did that answer your question, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> so I do not need to reapply for CUP. I would, I would amend probably the uh, narrative statement. Mm -hmm. I, and, I, <clears throat> and that's about it really. The revision on the the revisions on the civil plan were actually just the parking revisions because you had made some yep. clarity that we need ten foot stalls and a total of I think nineteen spaces. So that's the only revision and, to the And quite honestly, Mike, that might be reduced. Once you get rid of office, that's the biggest parking generator. Maybe you only need sixteen. We haven't gotten there. Um, well it's not an issue. So. It's not gonna change what you're doing. For the planning commission's benefit and, and, and there is and there is an outline here of those issues. We need an update from Rice Creek because they approved a cap rock a year ago. And you, you know, so they're in the process of doing that. Uh, we never got a photometric plan or anything else. 
I asked Mike if he knew anybody in the electrical business that could do one of these, and so I'm hoping before we come back and burden you with updating the probationary status that we get a photometric plan from City View Electric, uh, <laughs> including all of the uh, fixture details for poles and building lighting, and there's also a landscape plan that was a condition of approval a year ago. So. In the probation process, there's no more conditions. We, we want all this stuff. And, right. and I'll keep communicating with you. Uh, what I saw, I think, today verifies there's, there's no office, there's no nothing. The parking requirement could be 10 stalls instead of 19. And, and that, that might change how they want to go ahead with this. So with that, uh, we won't take any action here, nor would the city council at the next meeting. It's, it's a matter of Elizabeth and I going through a checklist, and, and then we would make a recommendation uh, to the planning commission and the council that, okay, we're done, and here are the new conditions. Because we haven't recorded the conditional use permit since it hasn't been implemented. I withdrew it. Yeah. And I just, want to clarify for the purpose of recommendations tonight. We talked about a preliminary plat, and I think is that the final up there, it's hard for me to see at this distance. Yes. Yes. Uh, so you are making um, two recommendations. You can do them in a single motion, but um, typically the Planning Commission in this community is not required to make a recommendation on a final plat. They've submitted, uh, as I think you did last year, um, a preliminary and a final at the same time. So you may as well make that recommendation. The council understands then that it's a package deal and, and you have no issues with either. But typically when we have only a, a preliminary plat public hearing, it may be months before we get a final plat and that's kind of a checklist process too. And typically we don't bring that back to the planning commission unless there are changes. So tonight, um, a single motion could be you approve the preliminary plat findings X and recommendations and the final plat findings and recommendations, however you want to do it. But we, we need the recommendation to include both preliminary and final plat. Thank you. Yeah, we got that down, Pat. <laughs> uh, anybody want to make a recommendation? Or any more discussion? I don't have no, no discussion. Anybody want to make a recommendation? Is it a motion or a recommendation? A motion, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary plat findings of fact, preliminary uh, 1 through 14, and the preliminary plat recommendations 1 through 9. The final plat findings one through four and the final plat recommendations one through ten for the is it Kinsella Acres second edition. Um, dated May twenty fourth. Dated May twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Thank you. <clears throat> Did we get all that in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just a quick question. We don't have to do anything with a conditional use no, permit no. status. That's administrative. We'll come back. Okay. Uh, this is Chris. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion seconded. Is there any discussion, questions? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Chris, I. Ron, I. Barb, I. Bob, I. Okay. The motion passes unanimously. It'll go, I guess, to the City Council next week on uh, June, what, 8th? Am I correct, Elizabeth? Yes, that will uh, be passed on to the Council for next week. Along with the CUP or not? I'm sorry? Along with the CUP or not? Uh, I don't know that we'll have the CUP recommendation yet, but... No. Uh, this is Dean again. I'll uh, look at the email you sent yeah. The most recent, I think, with the civil changes, um, and and I'll get back to you. It's okay. it's not inconceivable that we might go through a, a, a checklist and okay, okay, 
Well, thanks, Mike. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hope we don't see you next year. <laughs> Unless you want to build another building. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to item number eight on the agenda. It's a discussion, a non-binding concept plan. John Sawyer, pages 43 through 67. And uh, I Mr. Guess Chair, I just tried to call the applicant to see if he was caught in traffic or was going to zoom in, and I didn't get an answer. I didn't get an answer on the phone. So I don't know where he is. Okay. So what do we do? Put this on hold? So yeah, we can um, we can move on to to the next item, and then I can I'll try him once again. Okay. And we can go from there. Well, we'll go on to item on the agenda number nine: public hearing and discussion. Southwest Quad Preliminary and Final Plat, City of Columbus, pages 68 through 73. And at this time, for the record, with our city administrator, Elizabeth Mersko, the applicant representing the city, explain the purpose of this Southwest Quad 35 preliminary plat, final plat. Mr. Chair and Planning Commission members, this is more of a techni technical or technicality um, bringing this uh, preliminary and final plat through. Um, when we did the relocation for West Freeway Drive, um, we had a parcel of land um, that was all one piece. And after the public right of way plat was completed, um, it bisected it into three separate parcels or three separate parts. But it was not three separate parcels. It just now, when you when you click on that particular parcel in the GIS, it's just one parcel, even though the roads go through it. And so uh, tonight uh, we have a meets and bounds description, and with platting will be a lot block description, and it will then um, be three separate lots of record, um, so that we're able to um, sell the the parcels. Um, on an individual basis on either side of the road. So looking at what you have before you is the, is the preliminary plat. The final plat will be exactly the same as this. And um, I know this is probably not a good orientation, but um, West Freeway Drive is north-south. Ever Street goes along around Holiday. And the three lots were, the, there was a small triangle here. Um, in between the two lots and then this rather unusual lot was um, here and then you had um, a, a, the remnant piece here. So they will now be three lots of record and one will be part of public right of way. This small triangular area will become part of the right of way because there's utilities that go through there that we need to have access to. One of the things that um, the council will be talking about um, which would be my recommendation, but we'll certainly get some feedback. Um, if you go driving down West Freeway Drive, um, you will find that there's an apron already established. And in that apron, which is right in this, this area here, um, it was always intended to have a roadway um, accessing, accessing Holiday and the two lots. And it's whether or not the council feels they want to plot it today or in the future. And again, the apron's already established, it kind of goes nowhere, um, but you, if you drive down the road today, there is that access point. So that would be the only question I have for the council, whether we're platting the public right, right of way today with this plat, or we're gonna wait for the future. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I think I jumped a gun there. I think <laughs> Carissa should have read the public notice. Oh, okay. But, Go we'll just go backwards and we'll do it that way. <laughs> do you want to read it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the City of Columbus Planning Commission on Wednesday, June 1st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as parties may be heard and will be conducted in an interactive technology format at the Columbus City Hall located at 16319 Kettle River Boulevard, Minnesota to consider a request for pre preliminary and final plat Southwest Quad 35 for the creation of three new lots in the Community Commercial District. Members of the public interested in attending in person or monitoring the meeting should contact the city offices at 651 
464-3120 or visit the city website for more information at columbusmn.us. The hearing shall continue until all evidence and testimony has been received. Applicant is City of Columbus. The property owner is the City of Columbus. Uh, property location is a vacant property. Uh, pin number 24. 32213005 legal description as written signed Elizabeth Mersko zoning administrator submitted to the Forest Lake Times on May 16th and published and posted on May 19th 2022 Thank you Carissa I guess now we're going to jump is anybody uh, on a commission have any questions uh, to Elizabeth about this Just Bob just clarification are we are we looking at the preliminary and final plat? Yes, the preliminary and final plat will be uh, processed together um, on this particular application. Any other questions or comments? Barb, do you have anything? No. No, I don't. Yes. Dean, do you want to make any comments? I, I, I would just <clears throat> clarify because my memo didn't make the distinction um, at, at the time the debate occurred about actual right away on the northeast side of County 54. So what shows up on the preliminary plat makes a description of lots one and lots or lot two, block one with the extension of the right-of-way, which then connects to the holiday property, which makes sense. You still have lot one, and the other lot is similar, but they're now lot one, block one, lot one, block two. So there's two blocks on that east side, not one. I just want to make that clarification. It's not an, it doesn't end up being an inconsistency between the two plats. It's just an alternative that Somebody will ultimately decide, I, I think you should have the right of way, quite frankly, the way it's shown. Um, it could enhance bargaining power with whoever's using or maybe redeveloping the holiday site, because that's direct access back to this property instead of going all the way around. So there, there is a difference in the way in which the easterly two lots are described as depicted in the preliminary plat in the final. That, that doesn't change much, but um, it's an alternative that... Um, so would that take an amendment on number four then? Um, one of my descriptions talks about what those... Yeah, the final plat will essentially change to lot one, block one, lot one, block two, and then lot one, block three. So it'll have three blocks instead of the two. And I thank you because that, that, that's a good correction. So did everybody understand that? in finding, or uh, yeah, finding number three of the final plan. So block two is gonna be? It, it should read, the legal description would be lot one, block one, lot one, block two, and lot one, block three. Yep. It doesn't change what's described in the preliminary because quite frankly, that's how the preliminary was presented. Yep. It's kind of a last minute option to consider the insertion of full right of way. If you look at the drawing with the, the plat, it, it, it was a stub, but it maintained a single property line and that's where the land surveyor would say, and the county surveyor would say, well, that's all one block. The minute you interrupt a block by public right of way, then you create two blocks. That's the technical difference. And this all occurred kind of at the last minute. <clears throat> Dean, this is Bob. So on the preliminary plat, 
number four, we don't have to amend that. I don't think only so. Only on the final plat, number right. three. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. when, when we make the assertion that the final plat is consistent with the preliminary, when, when you look at this, you wouldn't catch it. So I, I think that statement is correct. But changing the legal, thank you. I, I think that's appropriate to go to the council. Any comments? Chris? No comments. No, I don't have anything. I have no comments either. Uh, okay, it's time to open up the public hearing for the uh, public. Anyone who has an interest in this matter and wants to present testimony as evidence on the issues, please acknowledge themselves by stating their name and address, after which you have the floor to speak. Having no one coming forth, we will close the public hearing and open up for a discussion by the Planning Commission. No comment here. No comment. Bob? No comment. Someone want to make a motion? This is Bob, I'll make a motion. Make a motion to approve and recommend to the City Council Dean Johnson's report from Resource Strategies Corporation, the preliminary plat and final plat for the Southwest Quad 35, preliminary fact, preliminary plat facts of finding one through eight, preliminary plat recommendations one through six, and final plat fact, findings of fact one through four with the addition on item number three to include lot one, block three. Also, final plat recommendations one through seven. This report was dated May 24th, 2022. Very good, I'll second that. Now we have a motion on the floor and seconded. Any uh, questions, discussions, comments? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Chris, aye. Ron, aye. Barb, aye. Bob, aye. I guess we'll wait to see if uh, the city administrator gets a hold of that. Is it John Stewart? Sawyer. Sawyer, I'm sorry. You're a singer named John Stewart? <laughs> Close. Stewart. <laughs> Probably one somewhere. Probably. Can we uh, move on? Well, she's. Let's go on to item number ten to uh, the concept here. Item number eight on the discussion non-binding concept plan by John Sawyer. Oh. Do we have to note that on this for the record? The no show? So do we put this off then? They, they left a message saying you'd have to reschedule. The non binding concept is really hard to do because you really need to present it. Okay. Well, it gives us something to do. On June 15th, isn't it June 15th? Yep. Whatever. Well, anyway, uh, Elizabeth, we got down to item number 12 with the information the city administrators report. Do you have anything? Well, um, Mr. Chair and Planning Commission members, I'm happy to report that we do have a, a new associate planner um, that's accepted a position and he'll be starting on Monday. His name is Frank and he is with us tonight. Well, that's great. Hi, Frank. He's on tonight? He is. Oh. Where's Hi. Frank, do you want to say hello to the Planning Commission members? Hi, uh, my name is Frank Cannon. I'll be starting on Monday, and I'm really looking forward to um, this uh, position and all the challenges that will be coming our way. So look forward to it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Welcome. Frank, nice on behalf of the you. Planning Commission, welcome. And you're going to have some challenges with us. <laughs> <laughs> but great, great you're on board. Opportunities. 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 Great opportunities. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. 
Great to see you. Uh, where are we now? We're on item 14, unless I missed something. We'll start with Carissa over there. Did I miss anything yet? Don't think so. Well, does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chris, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Mrs. Barb, I'll second it. Any discussion? Any questions? Anybody in the public want us to stay here? Nope. Okay. We'll take a vote on it. Chris, I. Ron, I. Barb. Barb, I. Bob, I. And a close the meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And that's the way it was, June 1st, 2020. <laughs> Recording stopped.